phenomenal programming that I couldn't find anywhere else. But the challenge that I experienced is no one engaged me at those events. While I was leaving the events with very timely and relevant information for my business, I didn't feel connected. So I left Women's Council. Uh, and I came back maybe a few years, 2013, I think, or 2014 is when I started re-engaging and attending events. And it was at that time where that particular leadership group really was focused on engaging the people who were attending. And I think that's so important. And that's what we're gonna kind of talk about is, not only are you, should you be telling your story about why you're so passionate, why you are here with the Women's Council, but really making sure that you're engaging the people who are taking the time uh, to join you in your organization. I uh, had a dual path. So I was volunteering with our local association as well as Women's Council. And that really allowed me to learn from both organizations, adapt different skills that I learned, from both the local and women's council. And really it allowed me to give back to both organizations. Uh, and so that's, that's an important uh, tip about my journey that I think uh, I wanted to share. Tracy, share with us a little bit about your journey. <laughs> so I'm gonna just pick up where you left off. I came uh, to women's council, I believe this was about four or five years ago. Um, someone, I think at that time, the motto was the task is to ask. And my managing broker, who was a women's council member, said, you know, uh, you're coming back to the industry. I think this would be a really, really good organization for you to uh, visit and get to know. It might be good for your career. So I didn't really give it a whole a lot of thought, but I said, you know what? She asked me to, to do it. So I showed up. I showed up to the next event. Um, and the, the minute I walked in the room, I was really excited to see all the vast uh, levels of different people that were in different parts of their real estate career. We had folks who were new to the industry. We had more seasoned folks. We had folks who were top producers. We had uh, realtors who were in the luxury markets. And it was just really exciting to see the diversity. Um, so after that presentation, I think it was, I don't really remember what it was at the time, but really to your point about relevant content, relevant information, um, I found it to be really useful for what I was trying to do in my business. And I signed up that day and you happened to be the membership director at that time. So I signed up on the spot and I just got involved. So I showed up for that program. I, I signed up on the spot. I found out when was the next program and I continued and continued to show up. And at some point when you continue to show up, someone approached me and said, hey, uh, would you like to uh, help out on the membership committee? Would you like to help out with our events? And I said, yes. And my, my journey sort of took off from there. The more I showed up, the more I got involved, the more I got to know about the Women's Council mission. Uh, and I think we used to say on our first conference, did you drink the Kool-Aid yet? So it, it was really impactful for me. And since then, it has really changed the trajectory of not only how I do business, I'm a better business person, I'm a a better mom in terms of leading a teenager. Uh, most of you know my daughter affectionately as the bug. Um, she has uh, embarked on her leadership journey in high school just by seeing me and all of the other women and men uh, and, how, and the things that we do in with the council. So um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. My, my journey started from showing up, I showed up, I got involved and it took off from there. So, now that we've talked about our journeys, let's talk about uh, how do we start the path of empowering others. And I think the first thing we have to remember when we uh, step into a leadership role is it's not about you. It's not about you. I know we get excited about the role. We get excited about the attention. We get excited about the responsibilities, but you have to always remember that in this role, it's not about you. You should always, Nakia, I think you say this all the time, you should always look to replace yourself. Can you speak a little bit about what you mean by that when you say replace yourself? Yes, I mean, you summed it up perfectly in your introductory uh, message to us. You never know who's watching you, right? right? So that new member that is trying us out for the first time or attending our virtual event for the first time is really looking for a connection. Uh, and what's so important for me as I've kind of traveled through the different roles, I remember specifically Tracy and I connected 
uh, because of Women's Council. We didn't know each other in the Chicago marketplace prior to, I think it was what, 2015? 2015, yes. So I do distinctly remember when Tracy came to her first event and I asked her, hey, we would love to have your energy and your passion here. And so what I'm always looking for, at that time I was vice president of membership when we had that role. How, who's gonna take on this task behind me? Who's coming next? Who can I share um, this Women's Council passion with? And I think, you know, I didn't get into Women's Council to learn Eventbrite. Now, everybody knows in Illinois, I'm one of the Eventbrite experts. That wasn't a skill I aspired to ever learn. But because of the leaders before me uh, who took the time to train me on something that actually has helped me in my personal life as well, um, I was able to give that passion back to Tracy. I asked Tracy to get involved and join us on the membership committee and life happened. Someone stepped down. Tracy was like, I'm ready to do it, but you need to, you need to spend time training me to replace this individual. So I think that's an important, yes. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking at uh, Lisa from Virginia, being inclusive is so important, absolutely. And inclusivity is not only talking about diversity, it's including the people who are in the room, the people who have taken the time to show up to your events, whether they're in person or virtual, they are there for a reason. So it's up to us as a leadership team to tap into those individuals. And again, in any role that I've taken, I'm always looking with who's next. And I think, you know, Tracy, I see Megan's on the call uh, from Colorado. They know I'm always like, hey, Tracy, what's next? Megan, what's next for you? How can I help? And so that's, to me, the true task of a leader. I think that's a good segue to our next bullet point, give others a place to shine. And that's exactly what you did. Um, and speaking to that specifically, someone else happened to step down because they took on another role. Uh, I, was a, I was a nervous wreck. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't know how to do this. I'm still learning and you know, what is Women's Council? But after we met, in, in addition to a few other uh, women who were on the board at that time, um, I set a goal. I got a committee through uh, good advice from the leaders that were already there. And I think in that next following year, Nakia, we happened to take second place across the country in our membership drive. So it, 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 I, I, did, I didn't know everything and there were some sore spots where you know, I was like, oh my God, how did I forget that? But what I appreciate was the fact that you, you and many others stepped aside and gave me that opportunity to fail forward. Someone mentioned that uh, yesterday, fail forward. And uh, failing forward is that's how you learn. You have to do it. You have to make some mistakes so that you know what not to do next time. And then you can teach the other folks who are coming behind you. Um, one thing that's really important to me is last bullet point, know that your time has an expiration date. <laughs> you got to get out of the way. You have to get out of the way. And I think, uh, you know, we may all see this across the country that we love the council. We love the council. We, by the time you get into your role and you really get into it, it's like the year is almost gone and it's time to now start having your elections. Um, it's time to start preparing for the installation. And it's like, I'm not ready to go yet. And that's okay. That just shows that you're really, really passionate about the organization and its mission and you finally got it. But you have to remember if, if it's not all about you and you're looking to replace yourself and you are moving out the way to give other folks a place to shine, you gotta remember that at some point, you gotta scoot out of the way. And, and hopefully if you follow the, the, the mission, the way it's designed, you would have found other opportunities within the industry or beyond that now you are starting a process all over again. And you can take all those things that you learn through the council to help you in your new role. Would you agree with that, Nikia? I absolutely agree. And I think that uh, as leaders, we're all very strong leaders here. Every, you know, as I'm scrolling through the screen, I know you guys have so many strengths and it's hard to let go sometimes. But giving others a place to shine in the organization sometimes means that we can't micromanage. We've got a coach and learning that difference and giving people the space to fail forward or even you know, blow things out of the water, right? Right. That is a part of the journey, especially when we get to that president's title. 
Woo. Well, we'll talk about that one a little later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to our next point we wanted to drive home, and that is how, so now we, we know that it's not about us. We know that we have to get out of the way at some point. We have an expiration date on our leadership timeline. So how do you find your replacement? How do you find and tap into the talent of others? Um, you have to look at who's showing up. You have to be observant. Um, you, ha you have people who are showing up. You're going to have folks who are showing up for the first time. They're new to the industry, so they don't know anything. They're trying to connect. What is it like to be a real estate broker? In addition to now I've joined this really super huge organization. How, how does this all fit? And you have your events. They may be a wallflower. You, it's up to you to step out of your comfort zone and get to know other people. Nakia, I'm going to let you talk on this because you, you do a really good job about networking and connecting others. Thank you. Uh, so I have been laser focused on making sure that people didn't have the same experience that I did when I first joined Women's Council. And what that means is people, again, when they are logging into Zoom even, that's an hour of their time that they could have been directing in a different place. So it's so in important that you get to know the people in the room, whether virtually or in, in person, whether that's taking time later to text them, make a phone call, have coffee. I do a lot of that. Uh, well, not as much now, obviously, but especially during my roles as presidency, learning and building rapport with your leadership team. But beyond that, who's on the committee? Who's giving themselves, giving of themselves to women's council is so important as president to find out what they are passionate about. So again, I, everybody knows locally that, especially once you reach the title of president, <laughs> the, the spotlight is not really on you, it's on everybody else. It's how you're leaving that organization. Are you leaving that organization in a better place? Are you leaving your leaders in better places? Have they learned something that they can take into their personal lives, into their community, or into their business from your experience. And sometimes it's not good. We all <laughs> like to say, not talk about the bad experiences, but I've had experiences and you know, some of my learning journey is what type of leader I didn't wanna be. And so that's, that's a learning opportunity. So really I'd say, again, spend the time learning what other people are passionate about and connecting them. Tracy and Megan, I gotta use uh, my, <laughs> <laughs> my, two of my favorite locals because they didn't really know each other. And Sarah and I, uh, I think, was Sarah president? I think Sarah, Sarah was president. president. Sarah yeah. was president. I was president elect. We connected them at women's council uh, meetings in DC. And they were like, we don't know each other. <laughs> so we literally purposefully gave them challenges at different events. I mean, so again, we really engaged our two newest members who had never attended the legislative meetings. Um, and so again, we helped them build that bridge and they felt connected. A lot of times, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one, people say they don't feel connected when they come to our events. Um, so Tracy, why don't you talk to us about uh, the ask? Cause you're really good at asking people <laughs> <laughs> to help. I would, it would be my pleasure. Uh, just in, in speaking about uh, what you're passionate about, what you're good at. And then I want to refer to someone in the chat. Lisa says, sometimes you have to ask someone more than once um, about joining. And so that's where you really have to be strategic and you have to be selfless. When you schedule that time to meet with that person, you want to really be as authentic as possible. You want to get to, I mean, we can talk all day about real estate. We can talk all day about deals and transactions. We can do that until the sun goes down. That's all, that's something that we all have in common. However, that's your opportunity to switch the lens a little bit and talk to them about something they don't know, but then stop talking. Do a little bit more listening so you get to know what's important to that person. What That's where you're really going to find out what do they like to do. I think at my time during uh, my presidency for Chicago, my theme was hidden gems. And it came to me because every single person that I took the time to talk to, I took me totally out of it. And I wanted to genuinely, authentically get to know them. And I found out some of the most amazing things. I found out we had flight attendants. We had people who were experts at Eventbrite. And that was, I didn't have to do all that work. We had people who 
um, like to sing. I mean, I just found out so many awesome things about these people that I noted to memory. So whenever we would run into each other, just off the cuff, I would remember a piece about something that we talked about. And they, that really went a long way. Um, and therefore, moving into the ask, it was easy. I could always connect something that they were passionate or talented about and find a way to um, marry that with something in women's council that they could still enjoy doing. Even though we do, we do real estate, we, we are all in different phases in our career, but somehow through the council, you can find something else outside of real estate that you like doing that you can refurbish, you can re-spark. And people really enjoyed that. So my ask was not always to get on the board or uh, do something that would, that would take their time. I would just say, hey, come join me at an event. Uh, one of our other locals, Antonia Mills, I hope she's on here today. That's exactly what I did. I met Tony at another event for another organization. And I said, hey, we're having an indoor golf outing. Why don't you come on and be my guest? She came, had an amazing time. Golf is her thing. I didn't know that until she beat the brakes off of me that day uh, <laughs> with her golf game. But she joined and her life has changed dramatically through Women's Council and to note that we're really good, good buddies at this point. So I think when we marry all these things that we say, showing up, pay attention to who's in the room, get to know them, step out of your comfort. Don't go and sit at the table or hover around the uh, coffee table slash the bar and <laughs> with the favorite people that you like to talk to. I mean, that's easy. We can talk later, but let's break that up and let's go get to meet some new folks. And you will find that you will enhance your networking skills on an amazing level. And I was just going to add this other uh, note. When I first joined Women's Council, I was scared to death to talk to people. Now, I feel a certain level of comfort. Like when we go to events, I look for that person in the room that I don't know. And I'll just walk up to them and start a conversation. And it's easy. I don't have the, the clammy hands anymore. The hair <laughs> on the back of my neck is not raised. I'm not shaking. It's very natural. And I've gotten to meet some really, really wonderful people not in the industry and through our Women's Council family. So, yeah. Uh, I think now that takes us to our next point. And let's see if we have some stuff in the chat. I think we got time to take on some questions here. Uh, yes, it is your responsibility, Natty Lee, to make everyone feel welcome and part of the group. It's not a task, you're right, to shop out to other members, although it's a great to have mentors and ambassadors. I love those two words, mentors and ambassadors. Uh, you do have to really get skilled at making folks feel comfortable. Gail, I love Gail Hartnett's uh, comment that you need to find your new best friends. I Yay. think again, once when you get comfortable being uncomfortable, you're, you're going to not only meet your, your new best friends, but you're probably meeting all of the leaders that are going to take the council to levels that you, you had no idea. Uh, so again, as once we get back in person and even now during the virtual breakouts, I encourage you to reach out to someone that you don't know. Many of your faces that I'm seeing across the screen, I got to know because I randomly sat at a table at Women's Council mid-year or national. And I just said, hey, here's my business card. And we've connected on Facebook or something like that. So again, our goal is not to, is to be uncomfortable. And, what, and a part of your leadership legacy or your journey is to continue to develop yourself as a, real, as a leader. Uh, and I wanna just chat about a few things. Um, leadership training. Even though you're president, that does not mean that you shouldn't continue to develop yourself as a leader. That means you probably need more leadership training because you've got a bigger pool of people who are really looking to you to accomplish some goals and help them on their journey. Um, so Women's Council Leadership Institute, if you have not applied for that or not been involved, I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, your PMN classes, <laughs> so important. Uh, and then I'll let Tracy talk about a few other options. Uh, women's Council conferences, exactly what we're doing. Like we look forward, this is like my vacation, my, my work, my husband thinks that I'm always traveling pre-COVID and I'm like, 
dude, I'm working. He's like, you guys have way too much fun for you to be working. <laughs> but that's the beauty of what we do. Uh, when we come to our conferences, we're getting impactful information. When we are hosting our events in our, in our, in our local communities, um, we are getting helpful information to help us be our better selves in our workplace. But I love seeing you guys. I love what we do when we go to our conferences in May and, oh, the national conference is my favorite. So remember, come to the conferences. Not only are we gonna network, we're going to get great information that we can take back to our businesses, but who said that earlier? You're gonna be meeting your new best friends. Um, Gail, love that. Local and state leadership academies. Check into your local associations and see if they have a leadership academy or some type of uh, training. Don't be afraid to step out and, and get involved with that as well as your state. Um, I'm a graduate of the Illinois Leadership Academy, loved it. It helped me, it helped shape me in so many ways. Nakia, you are a graduate as well. She's also a graduate of the NAR Leadership Academy. So definitely you have to continue to develop yourself as a leader, you have to. And then Nakia, this next one is your favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I get to take the talk about the task that we don't like. And that's asking for feedback as a leader. Uh, that is so very difficult. Um, Tracy and I, again, did not know uh, one another very well, but during my presidency, um, I actually purposefully went up to Tracy and asked her for feedback on a board meeting and some events and committee meetings. And I didn't like what I heard. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Tracy was like, and, and I love it because she asked me, you know, do you really want me to give you feedback? And she gave it to me. But what that did was twofold. It helped develop me as a better leader, hopefully. Um, and then she did coach me throughout the year and say, hey, you're doing great on this. I know we talked about this, but you're doing much better on this. But it also created a safe space for Tracy to know that her then president was comfortable enough to listen to her, to take those notes in, not get offended right. and actually act on them, right? So Tracy, you wanna chat a little bit about that experience, that particular? Absolutely, I was, I was nervous because um, this again was all new to me and who, how often does anyone come to you to say, personally, let's talk about feedback. We get surveys, you know, we do a lot of the techie stuff. So we kind of, we can kind of hide behind the scenes and say exactly what we wanna say and not be afraid that we'll get backlash because we were so honest. But this was my first time experiencing personal feedback, not uh, in a, actually a, it was a, in a professional setting. Um, we, were, we were talking as business colleagues and women's council colleagues. And when I asked for that feedback, it was, it was taken very well. Um, and as Nakia mentioned, throughout our journey, I felt empowered enough to come back and say, hey, you're doing awesome. I love the way you handled that situation. And so it, it is definitely needed. I mean, we do this in our businesses and stuff all the time, but don't be afraid to ask for the feedback and don't take it personal. This is all to help us be uh, better, a better version of ourselves when we're leading this organization. Yeah, and the last point I'll just add is don't ask your friend for feedback. Or if you do, ask the person who you don't have that connection with as well so that you have some comparative information. Because again, we can only grow as an organization, as individuals and as a group, if we are all feeling like we're in a safe space. And that's again, so very important to you know, put yourself in the position where people are able to give you very honest, very candid feedback. Yes. Few things in the in the chat. Um, we had someone ask Taffy, "Are we interviewing each new member to find out their goals and dreams?" Um, Delta in California has weekly coffee interviews of all new members. It is done by past four past presidents. It is systemized with them. Their their pipeline is amazing. I think whatever works for you, whatever system you can put in place, um, you the the I think the goal and the takeaway is you want to get to know who your members are. Because again, remember, it's not about you. You are always looking for your replacement. So what better way to, you can kind of have a two for one. You're getting to know your membership, but you're also looking and trying to find out who will replace me. 
right? Um, let's see here, someone else brought, is, is, is the Leadership Institute open to all members or just the committee? It is open to- It's all members can apply. All members, yes. Um, and I encourage you all, Megan and her team, they did an awesome job yesterday, uh, as well as many of the other ladies that are part of this year's Leadership Institute. Um, it, it, is, it, will, it will change things for you, trust me. So if you're thinking about it, stop thinking and start signing up and applying. If now, I could add one thing to Taffy's comment about connecting with new members, I would add you should be spending this time to connect with all members right now. Um, many of your states, you can't hold in-person events. So this is a perfect time. I know we're all Zoomed out. I absolutely am Zoomed out. But this is a perfect time to text, pick up the phone, and connect with all your members to check in. And it's yeah. not really about women's council, right? My, my call to people is like, how are you doing? Yeah. What's going on? And then we can leverage, you know, the relationships that we have in women's council. But I think this is such an important leadership legacy for those of you who are presidents and president elects right now, your legacy is maintaining the membership today, right? But even building on that because people need the connections even more. And I think if we figure or we really focus on that, you guys are gonna take the council to heights, to new heights. I agree, I agree. So let's go to, we, we now have talked about continuing to develop yourself as a leader. We're gonna ask for feedback. Now, we need to talk about accountability. Nakia and I, and a few of other of our Women's Council uh, family, we talk about this all the time. Everything is not always perfect. We all have, in leadership, and you learn this through your leadership journey, as far as the, uh, I learned this in the academies, the, in the Leadership Institute, we are dealing with different leadership styles. We're dealing with different personalities. And sometimes those personalities are far in a different direction than our own. How do you manage that? Accountability for us says, remember the mission. And that, that even takes you back to, it's not about you. So when we're having those sore spots in leadership positions where you, you have a conflict, let's keep it real. We have conflict in leadership. Anyone who tells you something different, they're not very being very honest. How do you handle the conflict? First and foremost, you want to remember the mission of the council. We are a network of successful realtors advancing women as business leaders in the industry and the communities we serve. That sort of takes the temper, it gets everyone in focus. It takes the temperaments down a little bit. And now we can start to carve away at, hey, what's the real issue and how do we get back to good? Okay, um, Nikki, anything you wanna add about remembering the mission? You guys know, and especially my local state, uh, I start with the mission. Uh, so when there, when there is conflict, because yes, it happens, uh, we all have to remember why we are here giving of ourselves. And that's the mission to empower each other. And so when we sort of refocus on that, that hopefully will take away some of the personal conflict. We all decided to give of ourselves, give our time for the purpose of moving the council forward. And so again, you guys know I love the mission and everything uh, for me goes back to the mission and the consent to serve because yes. we all executed that as well, which talks about our duty of loyalty, obedience, all of those fun things. So again, when we sometimes we just need reminders, right? Of why we are here. Um, for me, you guys know that training, not titles is sort of my mantra. Yes, I was president. Yes, it was on my list. But who else has president on their list? And how can I help get them to where they desire to be? So again, for me, that continuous uh, training and encouragement of others. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, the consent to serve is huge because sometimes we get lost in the fog. We get lost in the fog of we have personal things going on. We have work things going on. We have women's council things going on and we may have other things going on. And sometimes we drop the ball. Sometimes things, we miss deadlines. We, and then by human nature, we tend to make excuses, we may. So another reminder of that is, as Nakia said, reminder, remember that consent to serve. No one forced you, you signed it because this was your commitment to what you wanted to do for the council. 
That consent to serve is a clear reminder that, hey, I have a responsibility. I have a duty to do my part. So let's forget about the old stuff. Let's reset. Let's recommit. And let's be about the business of the council. That's that's pretty much my mantra. And, and along with that, I think one of the things I, I really took pride in, and that was, it's volunteer. we're volunteers. No one is getting paid to do this stuff. We're going to walk away with some amazing content to help us in our business. We're going to walk away with new skills that we're going to be excited about. But every day is not going to be a rosy day. So how about we do this? Let's We're all learning together. We're all doing this together. And let's, let's have fun. Let's have fun in the process. Remember that consent to serve. We all signed it. Let's do this and let's do it together. And we're going to have a good time. Tracy, if I could just add on the accountability, I understand this is hard for us, right, as leaders to look in the mirror first, right? It's easy to hold everybody else accountable, but it's it's a difficult task to look in the mirror. And I like to ask myself before I'm, you know, like, hey, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. A, as a, as a whatever my title is, have I performed my duty is a question that we need to be looking and asking ourselves. Have I coached the people, right? That is a question that is hard to ask of ourselves. Did I coach this person up to their full potential? And A, have I asked for help, right? As leaders, we don't think that we need help. We think we can do it all. And that's just not the case some some days as Tracy has indicated. So those are kind of three questions I like to constantly remind myself to look in the mirror first to ask, have I performed my duties? Have I coached someone? And have I asked for help? That's, a, that, that. that's really, no, I love it. I love it. That's just, you know, taking the, my mom used to say all the time, stop pointing the finger and let's put that thumb back because it points back to you. Start with you first. And then I think this last bullet point is something we both, we both bounce this one off each other all the time. You have to do the work. I'm gonna let you go first. <laughs> Ooh, you guys know I love, I, you gotta do the work. There's no escaping the work. Um, and again, I think some of us, once we have had that title of president, it just changes things. President means you work harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because again, you want to see the success of not only the leadership line that's coming up, but you want to see the success of the organization. You again, want to leave that organization in a better place than it was than you found it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Heather Osier, our, our past president, I think this was at Network 360, if many of you ladies were there, she gave me something. It was during the speed round. She says, look at this as a business. How would you run your personal business? Would you run your personal business and spend all the money? Would you run your personal business and not do your social media? You know, when we run our businesses, we have a certain accountability to ourselves because we want to be profitable. We want to be successful. And I kind of look at that the same way during my leadership journey with Women's Council. I want the network to be successful. So there are times when someone will drop the ball. We have no time to point fingers. We're going to remember the mission and the consent to serve, but we got to get it done. We got to get the work done. So, yeah, we, we, uh, we, accountability is a huge piece. And I think now that takes us to the conclusion of our actual presentation. Um, I think it, it wouldn't be, be true now. women's council if we didn't open it up for questions and Absolutely. networking. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, ladies, now let's Feel entertain to... some, some dialogue. Da- uh, Claudia out of Texas, El Paso, hi. Hi, thank you. Um, you know, as a leader, you need to invite uh, problems, okay? Invite them, but find the solution. But ha- And that finding that solution for that problem is gonna teach you. It's, gonna, it's an opportunity to learn more. It's an opportunity to, to make you smarter, you know? teach you where you maybe made a mistake where you didn't communicate well or something so a network without problems does not exist Uh, welcome problems as they will make you stronger and I look at problems as an opportunity as long as they're solved 
and I don't know. drag them on. Don't drag them for a long time. Solve them right then and there. It was Albert Einstein who said, if I had an hour to, to, to solve an issue, I would take 55 minutes listening to it, dissecting it, studying it, and five minutes 55 minutes to, to dissect it and five minutes to find the solution. And that's it. You're done with it. I love it. That's my Thank mom. you for sharing, Claudia. I love that. Natalie had her hand raised. And then Stephanie, I think we'll go to you. So Natalie? Um, I was just going to say that I think as um, I'm the president, current president of the Space Coast Network, getting ready to hand it off to the fabulous Pamela Cittadini, who is also on this call, and I was just gonna say that as a leader, I think the best legacy that you can leave is for people not to say your year was the best year ever. It needs to be the next year that is fabulous because, and the year after that, and the year after that, um, that's the best legacy you can leave is a network that's moving forward into the future. Absolutely. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie, that's so powerful because what I heard you say is that your goal as a leader is to help elevate that next president to even greater heights and the president after that. That's so powerful. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. Stephanie? I have wiener dogs going crazy because it's gorgeous. <laughs> We've got the door open. But sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, so two things come to mind. I don't think that it behooves us to call it our year. I think that it should just be the year because it sets us up as, all right, it's my year and then it's gonna be an end and then it's gonna be the next person's year, but also because it sets up the network. So to me for continuity, it feels best to me to do not call it my year which is a very difficult thing to do. Um, but the other thing I was gonna say to everyone, and maybe you guys have experienced this, I've been president of the Tucson Network this year. And because our um, attendance has not been great and we haven't had a lot of members, we haven't had events, um, I'm going to, to go around again and go in under Debbie Shireman and be president elect mm -hmm. next year, and then be president again. and hopefully hold the space for new leaders coming up, you know, so, so that yeah. because we have been growing, but nobody's ready to step up. Um, so just to that, to speak to that, I spent this year, really, somebody said, um, courting um, someone that I thought would just be perfect to be moving up. She is everything that I want the council to embody, right? Me, no. She is everything, has so much potential. I am so ready to see her take the reins. And you know, at the end of the day, she doesn't want it. She didn't make the connection. Not only is she not going to step up, but she's not on the board. She's going to go do other things. And that was a really hard thing to take. It felt personal. Like, I, I love you, Don. I've been, oh man, you're amazing. I hope you get ready. Are you ready yet? And at the end of the day, she said, you know, I don't, I think I've just been a disappointment to you. I, 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 I don't, I don't get it. I'm not hooking in. And I had to go, Hey, she's not in the space mm -hmm. to recognize value or to want this. So I don't know, maybe if you guys just can speak to that a little. Yeah, Stephanie, that is such a powerful two things you said that stood out to me. Uh, number one, that you're coming back, right? Because life happens, right? But what that says to me, and hopefully what that's saying to your members is that you are vested in the council, you're passionate about the council and you wanna see it succeed. Uh, the second piece about Don, everybody doesn't wanna be president. And I think that's something that we throw on people. So we've gotta ask, how can I help you? What can I help you with in women's council or just personally? Tracy, did you, I'm sorry. You know? No, I think that I think that's a great idea, uh, a, a great a great response. Um, 
that all ties back into getting to really know people. And Stephanie, I like the way you, you mentioned that courting is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, life comes and life happens and people will change their mind. But then that is also an opportunity to ask for that feedback. Um, maybe she didn't make the connection. Maybe she had a different expectation when she started and that she wasn't able to make that connection. So that could be an opportunity. I look at that as an opportunity. Ask her for the feedback and be honest. Like you know, did you want to do something else? And is it because we didn't ask? There's room now for you to really get to the root of the problem, but there's room for you to pivot and do something different so that hopefully the next time around with a different person, the experience will be uh, a different outcome. Yeah. Thank you. And Gail Hartnett has been dropping gems in the uh, chat. So I would love for her to unmute if she's comfortable and share a yes. little wisdom with us. Yes, Gail. <laughs> With that awesome background. Come on with it, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, you guys are nailing it. Uh, uh, everything that you're saying is exactly what's what's going on. And I was just about to add something to um, the gal from Arizona that was speaking about, uh, and the one that's stepping up again. Um, you know, 2020... Um, and I really believe this with my whole heart and soul, that, that our leaders are history makers. This year is going to go down in history. I mean, really, it'll go down in history for the leadership that has happened. And so many great things have happened. But I want you to remember that, um, as you just said, uh, Nakia and Tracy, these um, leaders that choose not to step up it's not just because of 2020. Um, everything that you're saying is correct. This has happened forever. We as Women's Council Network leaders and members, you need to remember, we don't have staff. Right. We don't have somebody that's keeping us on the path. It's us. So that's the greatest thing about being a leader in the Women's Council of Realtors. It's also the worst thing <laughs> because we don't have staff. <laughs> but, but I have to tell you that um, you guys, you're, you are rocking it. I'm so, so excited about watching everything. And, and I've been so blessed to be able to be part of uh, so many of the meetings this week. I was supposed to be in Florida uh, doing an orientation for the uh, for the Orlando leadership, and they changed it. And I was like, "Oh yay! I get to be on the the women's council meetings." But that's why my yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so thank you. Things happen for a reason. But thank you guys. You're doing great. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you, you for joining us. Who else wants to chat? Everybody's muted. I'm gonna start calling Megan. You you were active in the chat. Let's hear from you. As a Leadership Women's Council Leadership Institute recent graduate. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Here with Kate Kelly. Sorry. Um, so Megan Oswald from Chicago. Love Tracy and Nakia. Um Nakia's right. She threw Tracy and I together at, <laughs> at one of our first conferences. We were scholarship recipients to go to mid-year. Um, with the council and formed an amazing friendship relationship but i have grown because of these two women here so exactly what they're saying is they looked out for the people behind them right and that's what we could need to continue to do i couldn't agree with them more on that um and i think that a big part of you know nakia had mentioned it too not everybody wants to be a president and so i do encourage everyone that's here if someone asks you to be in a position and you know don't just say yes Think about it, make sure that it's a position that you're passionate about, it's somewhere that you wanna be and you can't dedicate your time because I felt too often where someone jumps into the position just to have that title. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, things fall to the cracks because it's not where they wanna be. And so it's right. okay to gracefully decline, um, be honored, thank them and, um, you know, do what you were supposed to do in another position. So, but thank you ladies both for um, the awesome presentation here and I will see you back in Chicago. <laughs> and let everybody know there that you're my conference spouse, even virtually, so don't get too comfy over there. <laughs> <laughs> what else ladies, this is Women's Council. I, you guys are not this quiet in person. <laughs> so, <laughs> 
What What's happening? What do you guys need help with? So I wanted to uh, just say, uh, Nakia and Tracy, um, so excited your inauguration was absolutely amazing uh it was really great to see so many women's council members um you know get installed to the chicago association so that was great but i wanted to just speak quickly uh to the timing i have mm -hmm. seen several women that have come through the organization locally that said no 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 to presidency or to stepping up that it just turned out that the timing wasn't right. And I've gotten uh, to see two of those women come through and be presidents uh, during the right time. And so a lot of times I think that it's life circumstances and uh, where you're at and just continuing to engage those women and tell them, hey, I understand, I get it. This might not be the right time. I'm just thankful that you continue to be involved and that you continue to give back to our organization. Chances are sometime may be their time and they will come back and that will be the time. And then they will look back and say, you know what? Thanks for not giving up on me. Oh my God, Misty, that is so powerful. Thank you. Yes. Be because what I heard you saying is don't, just drop them by the wayside. You continue to follow up and you cared about them. And you said, I thank you. I thank you for being honest that this wasn't your time. And I'll be here when your time, when you are ready. That's kind of what I took from that. And that literally just gave me chills, Misty. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? I'd like to share just a second. Yay. This is Kat in Salt Lake City. Okay. As you know, as president, I'm one of the emotional ones. Um, 2020. Me too, Kat. Huh? Me too, Kat. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm going to hold this together. 2020 was difficult, but we found a way to still, you know, bring value to our members and, you know, reach out and show the love as much as possible. And when I was asked to move up to state, I unfortunately had to decline because of a, a role in leadership that I never would have taken without being a leader in women's council. So for 2021, I've committed my time as a leader um, to another organization, but I'm still gonna help state with committees and then come back in 2022. But what I have found the most valuable is I'm helping this organization with no structure and no leadership and no values to build and become a better um, professional women in building in the HBA here in Utah and helping them develop what I have learned and developed over the years with Women's Council. So even if it's not in Women's Council, if you're going anywhere else, the leadership and you women, and we've learned so much and I'm just so appreciative and we get to share that elsewhere as well. And I'm excited to come back next year. <laughs> oh my God. I love that, yes. I love that. Can I just jump in and say this? Yeah. I, I love that, Kat, Kat, thank you so much for sharing. And you actually just summed it up in a nutshell. If you Do we ever just dissect the mission and think about the mission? It's not just a bunch of words that we rattle off and it sounds great. What we do, Nakia said it at her installation, but I always say we are a boot camp for leadership. Nakia says we are the Navy SEALs of leadership. I think they're both the Navy SEALs, but that's exactly what we do. That's not to say that you join Women's Council and we're stuck. You join Women's Council and we do what we do so that you can become a most awesome leader to take wherever you decide to go. We have folks who've moved into politics. We have folks who are leading uh, Fortune 500 companies. We have people who are leading at their state at the national level. We have amazing women across our country doing like amazing things. And, and if you really think about it, when people give their story, part of their story says, I owe it all the Women's Council because I would have never been able to run an efficient and effective board meeting had I had not had that training and the council. So it's okay if the path isn't to continue to the national line, just take what you can and be great. Because what we wanna hear is, we wanna have that little shout out that says, it's because of Women's Council leaders are made here. I love it. Thank you for sharing that, Kat. Kat, I'm just going to jump in. Thank you for sharing your emotion and passion. And to Tracy's point, we always forget that last line. And in the communities we serve. 
So you, you're doing exactly what Women's Council's mission is to help develop other women. And people are still gonna watch you. People are gonna wanna join Women's Council because of what you're doing, even in a different organization. And so again, you're creating that leadership legacy. So thank you again for everything you're doing in Utah. Awesome. Claudia. And Ms. Kat, when you come back in 2022, you can share with us what you learned in a different organization. Yes. 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 This is awesome. This is the quietest group. Now, I know none <laughs> of you ladies are this quiet in real life. <laughs> so we've, we've got a few minutes left. Anybody wants to jump in and share? I'm going to start comment? calling out. Yeah, oh, I, would, I, I would like to share something. I'm Julie Gonzalez uh, from Northern California Delta Network. And I'm currently the event director for our network. And the 2020, um, I became a new member uh, in November of 2019. And then in that I right away was stepped into the governing board. So it was definitely like all new for me from the very beginning. And it was, um, a, it, you know, I wouldn't say that 2020 was hard um, because I was a new member and I was new to a governing board. And I took a lot from the year as personal growth. And there were some, ad there are some adversities in our, in our board and, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. But I think for me personally taking that, you always need to, in order to become, a, in order to continue to grow as a leader, you have to have self-awareness. You know, you can attend as many, you know, conferences as you want, and you can continually keep hearing the same thing over and over again. But if you're not willing to look at within yourself as you were sharing, um, it becomes really difficult. You know, you, you just, you have a certain mindset and you're just there, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't go from there. But I did take away, and I like the points of, making sure that we stay with our commitment, right? To perform and be consistent in that. And that's something that I take a lot of pride in and having, you know, trustworthiness, um, people can depend on me and regardless of our differences. Secondly, um, it's great to be able to grow in this last year, to be able to have the confidence to encourage others from what you said as coaching, right? Not that I don't see it necessarily as coaching, but I just said, come alongside of you and just encourage you to continue your own personal path, right? And growth. And then it, the one thing that I know that I, that I struggle with as a, uh, as a very, um, as a leader is that when you were saying, you know, asking for help, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know that's something that I continue to grow in and will probably for the rest of my life, because I see myself more of a servant heart. I serve others and it's hard to uh, receive. So the thing that I've taken from Women's Council are all these little nuggets that you put together and you continue to just um, hopefully build from that self-awareness, you know, and, and, and be willing to remove some blind spots to be able to keep growing. And whether you continue to be in the governing board with Women's Council or you are challenged and encouraged to serve in other areas of leadership, I think that, you know, Women's Council does uh, offer a nice, um, it's a, like I said, it's like my life is a puzzle piece and Women's Council is just another piece of puzzle that fits into my journey, right? So Absolutely. I think that that's what I've taken from all of these conferences that I had the privilege of attending, whether they were on Zoom or whether they were on, in person. Well, thank, so, thank you, Julie. You. Thank you so much for sharing. That was and great. I think we are out, out of at, time. We are at the hour. So Women's Council. And you know, I love to on start time. on time and end on time. That's, <laughs> That's Women's right. Council. <laughs> so thank, thank you, you ladies. I look forward to seeing you all in person soon. Thank you so much for spending an hour of your day with us. We, we really appreciate you. Enjoy you the rest so of the conference. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Take Bye. Care. Thank you guys.